5.14 is on integrative pest management. You want to be able to describe it as well as its benefits and drawbacks. So basically what integrated pest management boils down to is using chemical pesticides as a last resort, finding other alternatives or maybe using them in conjunction with other alternatives to minimize how much you need to use them and thereby minimizing the disruption to the environment. So first we have prevention methods, then cultural, then physical, biological, and as a last resort, chemical. So essentially as you as you progress to these different stages of um, pest management, it goes from more of a prevention to more of a intervention way of way of dealing with pesticides or pests. I'm sorry, and so they gradually can become more toxic and more uh, more risky. So cultural might be things like making the environment inhabitable for the for that pest. Physical and mechanical might be physically picking or removing those um, those pests. Biological might be introducing a predator, or parasite, or using genetic manipulation to make it an unfavorable environment. And then, as a last resort, then we have our chemical pesticides um, or repellents, things like that, to get rid of the pests. And if you want to pause and check this out, but I'm not going to go through this because this is a lot of details. It's got a lot of details. So cultural methods make the environment less favorable to the pests. It could be changing the timing of replanting, changing the soil pH, the amount of sunlight. Also using things like intercropping or crop rotation. Intercropping is when you grow two or more crops in the same field, because if you have a monoculture, then it, it makes them all um, vulnerable to that same pest. But then also, because they all eat the same food, then that pest can more easily disperse um, through that through that field. But if you have something that that it doesn't like, or doesn't grow on, or doesn't do well with, or whatever it is, then it stops there and it can't continue. So you might have some crop damage, but you won't have a complete crop like loss. Also, crop rotation because that changes the crops every year. Uh, so if you have the same food source every year, then they, then they thrive best. But if you change that food every year, then they kind of have to start from square one over and over and over again. Physical methods, again, physically removing the, the pest, either through barriers, troughs, vacuums, mowing, tillage. Uh, genetic methods kind of goes along with biological. You can engineer pest resistance. Um, so you can put genes into this this crop that make it naturally resistant to that pest or um, releasing sterile meal. So what they can do is they take um, they take like the larva or this is not larva, the eggs or larva. I'm sorry, it's early. <laughs> but anyways like when they're really really young they can like put gamma radiation on these these young bugs and make them sterile. So then when they release them into the population, then the wild population will try to mate with the sterile males and then not produce offspring. And so as a result, you see the population decreasing over time because you're not producing any offspring. Biological methods can also include predators or parasites and diseases of the pest. You can use pheromones to disrupt mating cycles so they don't mate in the first place. Uh, as we're Remember, as we get up that pyramid, it becomes more risky. So with biological methods, you have the chances of attacking beneficial species, not just the species that you want. So some obvious pros, we see that we reduce the risk that pesticides pose to wildlife because if we're using other techniques besides pesticides, those pesticides aren't getting into the water, aren't getting into the soil. Um, they, they're not magnifying up the food chain. And also, we don't have pesticides on our food, so that is an increase to our human health. But how, um, however, it's complex. It takes a lot of studying and, and maybe trial and error to see what works. Um, there's a lot of factors involved, so it's, it's a really complex system as opposed to just spraying the fields with pesticides. And it can also be very expensive, so it's not something that can be easily done. As a summary, describe integrated pest management as well as its benefits and drawbacks.